One out of every 110 babies born today, born today are diagnosed with autism. 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 That's an increase of 57 percent. 57 percent. Since 2002. When autism is 1 percent of the children, the reality is, is we're not really dealing with something called autism. We're dealing with a bunch of children who are ill. Before we start the proceedings, let me just make uh, an announcement. The World Autism Awareness Day event, the one that we are going to start now, is uh, being webcasted live and also join us on Facebook Live and share the Facebook stories that are going to come out now. So uh, connect, you will have uh, an announcement here on the top of your table, and let's ensure that we do as much buzz as possible, right? Thank you very much. Let me now formally welcome our uh, dear Ambassador Masoud bin Momen, acting President of the General Assembly. Let me also welcome all of you, dear ambassadors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the UN. Thank you very, very much for joining uh, us here. Uh, let me introduce as well myself. I'm Christina Gallag. I'm the Under Secretary General for Public Information and Communications. Please be all welcome here today. We come together to renew our commitment to raising awareness of the rights of persons with autism to equal opportunity and full participation in society on an equal basis with other citizens. To achieve this inclusive society that we aspire to, we must, we really must uh, ensure that the fundamental rights enshrined in the Convention of the, on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities are known and most important are respected. Article 6 of the Declaration reads, everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Yet, we know that reality does not always match the letter of the law. Far too often, persons with, aut with autism and persons with other disabilities have been denied this basic right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now turn on to the colleagues, the friends here in, uh, at the table. And the first one I'm going to introduce, and I'm really, truly honored to introduce, is His Excellency Masoud B. Momen, Acting Presidency of the General Assembly. Now, let me turn on to uh, our keynote speaker for this morning, Professor Simon Baron Cohen. Dear Simon, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Professor uh, Simon Baron Cohen is one of the world's most recognized figures in the field of uh, autism research and advocacy. He is professor of uh, developmental psychopathology at the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom and director of the University Autism Research Center. Good morning, and first of all, thank you, Christina and Ambassador, uh, for this uh, very warm welcome to the United Nations. At least 1% of the world's population is on the autism spectrum, which equates into some 70 million people with autism on the planet. We are here today to make sure that the world is thinking about them and their families. Autonomy and self-determination for people with autism cannot be separated from a discussion of their human rights, which is the focus of my address. Before we consider human rights and autism, what is autism? 
Autism is a spectrum of neurological disabilities involving difficulties with social relationships, communication, adjusting to unexpected change, dealing with ambiguity, and entailing sensory hypersensitivity and anxiety. Autism also leads to a different perceptual and learning style so that the person has a preference for detail and develops unusually narrow interests and an unusually strong preference for facts, patterns, repetition, and routine. Autism is an example of neurodiversity, that our brains are not all wired the same. Differently wired brains lead to different profiles of strengths and challenges and should not be judged as better or worse. They are just different, and people with autism are asking for two reasonable things, acceptance of their difference and respect for their difference. Autism is caused by genetic factors interacting with environmental factors and is often accompanied by medical symptoms such as epilepsy or gastrointestinal difficulties. People with autism need a diagnosis to reflect that they are suffering and need support. Autism is not a disease in the classical sense because although it invariably leads to disability, it often also leads to talent, for example, in excellent attention to detail and excellent ability to spot patterns. The autism spectrum is broad because at least half of people with autism have good language and intelligence, whilst others have additional disabilities in language development and in learning. But all people with autism, like everyone with a disability, have legal capacity, even if they need support to make decisions and need safeguarding. One in three adults with autism experiences severe mentally, mental ill health because of lack of support. I work in a clinic for adults with Asperger's syndrome, a subgroup of autism, Two thirds of them have felt suicidal and one third of them have felt so bad they have attempted suicide. In new research from the universities of Cambridge and Coventry in the UK, we have found that among those who have died by suicide, approximately 12% of them had definite or probable autism. Every suicide is a personal and a family tragedy. Let us have a minute's silence to remember those people with autism who have died by suicide. Finding such a shockingly high rate of autism in people who have died by suicide is not surprising when you consider how many of these individuals did not have the benefit of early diagnosis and instead struggled undiagnosed and without proper support. Early diagnosis is possible in childhood. There are screening measures that can detect autism in toddlers but most countries do not screen for autism in the preschool years, or indeed even in childhood or during the teens. Note address on the discriminations that uh, uh, people with uh, autism are facing and the tremendous amount of work needs to be done in order to tackle those discriminations. Thanks very much for encapsulating so vividly the issue which is at the core of the discussion that is going to follow up now. So this brings uh, to a closure the first part 
of our session. Now I'm going to um, hand over to my colleague Maher Nasser for the organization of the panel discussions. And again, let me thank very much uh, Simon and uh, Ambassador Nomem for joining me here today for this uh, opening. Thanks again, and let's move on to the next phase of the debate.